This is a Pele Media Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Goonies Minute. Goonies Minute is the fan podcast where we carefully overanalyze and explore the film Goonies minute by minute. I'm Brady. And this is your host, hey you guys, Chris. There you go. Thank you, Sloth. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Uh, Chris, how you doing today? Doing great. How are you, Brady? I'm doing pretty good. Ready to get in a minute 17. But my tongue is blistering right now because of the extra spicy jalapeno poppers you made and brought over. Oh, and, and you know what's great about those jalapenos? What's that? They were uh, shipped all the way to Baton Rouge from Astoria, Oregon. There you go. From this nice That's little right. farm uh, in Astoria. So I'm just trying to get into the minute every way just, I can. Yeah, every way you can. Let's, yep. let's always bring it right back around the Goonies. That's right. Well, I tell you what, without further ado, let's uh, bring it right back around the Goonies. You want to get into the minute? Let's get into the minute. In the previous minute, we saw the gang looking over the map and piecing together what it was. At 17 minutes, Bran mentions the name of a rumored pirate, One-Eyed Willie. At 17 minutes and 7 seconds, Mikey recognizes the name from stories his dad used to tell him. At 17 minutes and 16 seconds, Bran tells Mikey that dad was only telling him tall tales. At 17 minutes and 28 seconds, Mikey insists that the stories are true and begins to tell the legend of One-Eyed Willie. The story involves Willie making away in a ship full of stolen treasure. At 17 minutes and 56 seconds, Mikey reaches the point in the story where Willie was forced to retreat into a nearby cave in order to protect his vast collection of stolen treasure. And thus ends Minute 17 of The Goonies. So, you know, we've got um, Mikey explaining uh, the story of One-Eyed Willie here. And it's, it's I, I think in a lot of other films they would have presented this backstory through some kind of opening text. Like, let's say in a lot of historical movies like... Um, I, the only thing that's coming to mind right now would Star be Star Wars. Star Wars is perfect. I mean, that's that's the perfect example. That's the best example, example. Yeah. where they're catching you up on what's going on. Uh, a lot Man, of other... and you know what? For someone as as, as dumb and as, as as dull as I am sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Because I I'm I watch a movie with somebody and they're watching it with me for the first time and I'm already asking them what what's this what's this what's the backstory here? Yeah. And it is so nice when somebody lays it out for me. Yeah, like in the case of Star Wars? Or, exactly. And, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. There's it takes some, me a while to catch up. Some other movies that uh, you know, are more like okay, historically based than Star Wars, for example. Let's take Gladiator. Right? It's not real, dude. Take Gladiator, for example. That's the first thing that's coming to mind. I love Gladiator. It's so good. Where they, uh, they tell you, they catch you up to speed on what's been going on historically through this opening text. It kind of makes sense that the Goonies would have done something like that with the One-Eyed Willie story and the, you know, Spanish and British naval experience. And... Are you not entertained? <laughs> exactly. Now say that in Sloth's voice. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Perfect. So anyway, uh, it's better suited here because one... It gives Mikey's character some growth that he really needs because up until this point he hasn't really been doing anything other than you know complaining, and uh, so he needs something to really kind of rope himself in. And this one-eyed Willie fascination is the best way to one give his character some growth as well as give us that backstory uh, and catch us up to speed on what lies right underneath the foundations of Astoria and yeah, what and is in these imagine, caves. Can you imagine if they did have a write-up in the beginning? Yes. Yeah. This? And, and then cut being to a that it's a, and it to me it, it's it's not just a kids movie, although it was intentionally originally for kids. Okay. But can you imagine like a kids movie starting out oh, with a starting bunch of writing? Like that? Yeah, that yeah. That would just put them to sleep from the get go. Absolutely, and plus it's very dramatic, so it would have to be like, and it would be, I'm sure it would be really cool, like you get like a pirate map with the stuff written in that old kind of calligraphy. But uh, but it still just would have put a kid right to sleep. Kids don't want to read, you know. I, I love when Mikey. Starts uh, telling the story, the, the, or the realization he gets as he's realizing, yes, this is a story my dad told me. Yeah, it's like you could see the big eyes thing. You could see that with him. What matters here, one, is the facts that he's giving, is the history, but it's also Mikey and his mm-hmm. zeal, oh, yeah. his excitement, yeah. and, and it seeing builds. the kids exactly. It builds. And that's almost more important than, than oh, it's everything more important. he's. I just than, like thinking about yeah, that. than the de- details he's talking about. I do, however, have an interesting fact. I'm going to wait until tomorrow to tell you uh, about Sean Astin's reading of the history of it. That's, yes. that's actually very interesting. I think you know. What yeah, I'm talking we, about. yeah, we had so, briefly touched on that. Um, so One-Eyed Willie 
is it's it's always cool in a movie whenever you get a character, a very very pivotal character, who you never see, you never right. meet, and when you do right. finally meet him, he's dead, he's a skeleton. Uh, another good example of this is Kaiser Soze and oh, The God. Usual Suspects. Another one I love. Oh, oh, I know. That would be a cool minute-by-minute minute breakdown. Oh. Hey, yeah. we got to check that out. <laughs> Might have to do it, yeah. So, uh, so One-Eyed Willie is just a really, really cool example of a presentation of a character like that. And he's a, he's a great MacGuffin. Willie and his uh, treasure, his rich stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say MacGuffin? I do not know what you're okay. I've never heard of that word in my <laughs> life, but I would love for you to define it for me, then I might the, know what you're talking about. It's a plot device that moves your characters through the story. Like, let's say Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. The uh, Ark of the Covenant was what drove Indiana Jones oh, through Oh, yeah, okay. So One-Eyed Willie and the Treasure Drives. Yeah, exactly. oh, absolutely. And the yeah, I just never heard, I've never heard that term. Yeah, but. so the MacGuffin in this case is One-Eyed Willie and his treasure, and it's being used to motivate uh, four groups through the story. You get the Goonies who are going to find One-Eyed Willie in the treasure. You get Sloth and Chunk trying to catch up with them. You get the Fratellis who are trying to catch up with them. And then in turn, uh, the kids' parents trying to find them. So Mikey's telling the story, uh, and Willie's ship is named the Inferno, which actually I hadn't caught until I was you know, watching the actual minute breakdown, which is pretty cool. So the Inferno versus the British Armada is the little battle that takes place. And uh, But another thing that's pretty funny... Uh, when he's telling this story, uh, Brant was like, your dad told you that to get you to go to sleep. And then it's like, it so almost sounds like a chunk story. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. listen to this story, the way he tells the story, even though he's believing it and Chunk's telling a lie, it, it's I think maybe it's not a chunk story for him, but the other kids, the other Goonies, you can see that there's not really buying into it. Yeah. At first, mm -hmm. they're like dismissing it, and of course, when we get into the next minute, you'll see more of the dismissal. But uh, you know, he's he's in mid story right now, and I'm just telling you, if you look at the kids and, and their reaction, they're not buying it yet. Brant's not buying it. Brant's like, yeah, that was just yeah. to put you to sleep. Mouth so, is kind of off. Now, obviously, well. if the believability of something that Mikey would say would be more than chunk. Uh huh. But you know, we'll get we'll get into that more later. But it's just really interesting how you I, know it's 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 it literally, literally it sounds like a tall tale. Yeah, yeah, old pirate's tale. Yeah. You know? uh, what a story to tell your kid to get him to go to sleep. Some guys, a uh, captain killed all his men, boarded himself up in a cave, and set booby traps to kill other. And, and <laughs> it's and it, but it just goes more into man. There's so much more into Mr. Walsh. Yeah. That we'll never yeah. we'll never know. So Man. much more into it. This, yeah. That, that's really... Uh... Which goes even further whenever we find the Chester Copperpot uh, front page. Right. You know, which right. just... Which will be next minute. Which, yeah. <laughs> we'll get into it next minute. Did your dad or mom ever tell you any, like, bedtime stories when you were a kid? Uh, they told me stories. They told me some ghost stories. Yeah. But they didn't say they were tall tales. They said they were real. Did they? Yeah. Like what? Um, My mom was visited... By uh, some dead relatives, oh. before, and she said he thought it was a dream, and then that she could see a glow around him sitting on the side of the bed, things like that. My dad told us one about. So we lived in a neighborhood that was developed in like the seventies, like not like less than ten years before I was born, and uh, there was this house on a corner. But he said uh, that it was built in the Civil War or something, and this house looked. It was clearly built like. The, you know, five, less than five years probably before he told the story. And uh, he said it was the the scene of a big Civil War battle and cannon fire blew the place up. Well, there was a soldier, a Confederate soldier who died in uh, the attic or whatever. And he said, some say that when you drive by this house to this day, you see a disembodied arm holding a lantern floating around the attic oh, looking, wow. for the, looking for the rest of the body. Now that's a story. Yeah, and I'm like, thanks, Dad. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. He says, good night, and turns out the light. It's crazy what our parents would tell us to get us to go to sleep, and this story See, that, that Mike would make telling, me go to sleep. Do it would? No. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Would make me to go to sleep at all? He told us some story about an experience he had when he was a kid, where he and some friends went into this old antebellum home that was run down, was abandoned, been abandoned for decades, and uh, they go up all the different floors, like three story house, into the attic, and then they saw something moving in the corner, and it was a man, it was like a home, hobo or something, who stood up and oh, started geez. coming after him. And they bolted, 
and he uh, runs into just complete blackness, and he he hit the wall, and it opened up some kind of like, I don't want to call it a trap door, but it was a staircase, like a um, servant staircase or something, and he just kept running down. He said it was like going into hell, and he could feel the walls hitting his shoulders. It was so tight, and he made it to the bottom and hit another door and went right out into the uh, front yard, and his friends were waiting for him. So some abductor could have been right coming down the stairs, thing. isn't it? So yeah, none of that would make me. Good. I mean, I, I don't think my parents never did anything like that to make me go to sleep. These are, I mean, even at a young age, I wasn't going to allow that. Mm -hmm. Like I would have said, just, I mean, you can't do that. They wouldn't have done that. But I also, I would have asked more questions than the average person. But it would be told during the day, or maybe <laughs> yeah. it would have been told in the evening. Yeah, and then I couldn't go to sleep after that. See, that's what sucks. Is like I had a bunch of brothers growing up, so we would like share rooms and stuff. So it was easier to like get to sleep. You're an only child, so right. if you were told stuff like this before bedtime, you're like, okay, good luck, me. You know? Yeah. Jesus. It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. But it's fun to be able to sit here and recount that kind of stuff now. And uh, just like, you know, Mikey's enjoying doing for his fellow Goonies here in the scene. That's right. So. And a yeah, minute ends and kind of mid story. So, uh, yeah. That's pretty much all I have that's for this it. minute. That's it. Let's uh, pick back up in the middle of Mikey's story tomorrow Let's do it. with minute 18. So that's it for minute 17. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us today uh, to talk about this minute as well as ghost stories our parents would tell yep, us to we put go. us to sleep. And uh, until next time, remember, Goonies never, never say, say die. die. Goonies Minute is a fan-supported podcast. If you like the show, then leave us a review on iTunes. You can find us at GooniesMinute.com, Facebook.com slash Goonies Minute, Twitter.com slash Goonies Minute, and at Instagram at Goonies Minute. You can contact us at GooniesMinute at gmail.com. You've been listening to a Pele Media Podcast. For premium content and exclusive podcasts, visit us at patreon.com slash Pele Media. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash Pele Media, and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash Pele Media. Yeah.